check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. guys so a uh, change of plans so uh, the original plan was to head to uh, the racetrack after going you know through uh, Titus Canyon but I there was there was signal at the end of the trail um, so, so I, I called my wife and um, for uh, like family reasons I gotta cut this trip a day short which is okay I mean I originally um, was gonna head home well today's uh, Saturday and I was originally originally was supposed to head home Tuesday so cutting it you know a day short you know it still gives me like plenty of time so uh, the original plan was to head to the racetrack and then one night at a racetrack and then two nights at Eureka Dunes but because I have to come home um, a day early I decided to uh, head to Eureka Dunes for two nights I've always loved Eureka Dunes I mean love uh, camping there I love photographing the place and hiking the dunes and stuff so uh, I decided to do that instead so you know anyways it was still along the way from Titus Canyon instead of you know cutting over to Yubihibi Crater and then down to racetrack you know I'm still I'm in the vicinity of Yubihibi Crater but I'm gonna turn right and head to the Eureka Dunes so um yeah I'm all I'm all aired down and ready to go so meet you at the dunes from Yubihibi crater road i veered right and headed north on death valley road it's a graded dirt road with some corrugation along the way i did notice a few crossovers with all-terrain tires coming from the opposite direction with no problem at all About 21 miles in, you'll see a sign for crankshaft crossing. You can't miss it on your right with the rusted crankshafts highlighting the landmark. This is a three-way junction that connects Eureka Valley, Death Valley, and the Nevada State Line. Past Crankshaft Crossing, you'll head your way up the Last Chance Mountain Pass. Making your, your way up wasn't very difficult at all and it's a gradual climb. Along the way, you'll catch a glimpse of a few abandoned mines. Twelve miles past Crankshaft Crossing, you'll reach Eureka Valley and you make a left to head south on Eureka Road for another 10 miles until you reach the dunes. When I went this past November, there was plenty of space to find and set up camp. If you ever drove further along the trail and onto Steel Pass, comment below and let me know how was your experience. Doing Steel Pass and the Lippincott Pass just west of Racetrack Playa are still on my to-do list in the area. The Eureka Dunes in Death Valley are the tallest sand dunes in North America and reaches to about 680 feet from the base. These dunes are also known to sing and make sounds like the bass note from a pipe organ when sand avalanches down a steep base.
One new piece of gear that I didn't have the last time around was an awning. If you're ever going to be overlanding anywhere where there isn't a whole lot of shade, I highly recommend getting one and it'll make camp way more enjoyable in the middle of the day. On my Jeep, I have the Rhino Rack Batwing Compact mounted on my rack. And I love this thing because it's so easy to set up and I have 270 degrees of shade. Hey, so we finally made it to the Eureka Sand Dunes. It's, uh, well, it's like around 4 o'clock. The uh, sun's already coming down over here and it's starting to feel a little chilly. But uh, yeah, we're here. I'm, I'm really glad that I'm, that I'm here, that I'm back. Um, I think I'm about to set up camp, cook some dinner, and then uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow I'll get some uh, some sunrise photos of the dunes. So my wife got this for me. If you can see, it's called Radiate. It's a portable campfire. It's basically it's pretty cool, but it's like a giant candle i think you know that's kind of the uh basis of this thing made with recycled wax and it's portable you know instead of having like campfire i'm gonna try this she gave this to me a couple years back so let's uh, see how, we, how it goes Since this uses wax, make sure that you place it as level as possible so none of the wax spills over. It took me a few minutes for the rest of it to catch, but it is a nice alternative to carrying firewood if space is limited inside your vehicle. But on a cold night like it was this night, I wouldn't recommend it because it didn't provide much heat. But if you're out camping in the middle of summer and want an alternative light source, you could make a case of using one of these. Man, I woke up, uh, had a hard time sleeping last night. Um, it's cold. It's cold. It's, you know, it's, it's a desert. It's, you know, we're in, in November. It's going to be uh, hot during the day. And, uh, you know, pretty, pretty cold at night. But, you know, uh, luckily it wasn't as windy as our first night um at right light yeah, but the wind was like howling but uh yeah woke up um woke up to this this is freaking awesome i don't even need my headlamp well i didn't i didn't i didn't need my headlamp like in the middle of the night like the i don't know if you could see the moon somewhere there yeah um it was uh yeah it was pretty it was pretty bright outside but luckily i woke up and I get to see this. We made it up to uh, Eureka Dunes. It was uh, quite a hike. So I took come out here um, before it got too hot it's like you know it's still in the morning I think uh, 10 a.m. Um, it's not too hot but I just wanted to just come out here just take a quick hike um, just to check out this place again it's been man I, I really miss this place but yeah this is these are the, the Eureka dunes um, yeah it's really beautiful um, you got you know those mountains over there uh, let's see here you have if you look Way out over there in the distance, you could see uh, the Sierras starting to get a little bit of snow. And if you look over there, that's uh, that's where that's where camp is. But we're uh, we're a ways up from uh, going back to camp. So yeah, we're having a, we're having a great time. Um, yeah, I'll be back here probably uh, near a uh, golden hour in the afternoon just to get some. Get, get some shots, so some more shots and some landscape, but yeah, so having a good time.
So I want to tell you what just happened. It was a really awesome sur surprise. So in Death Valley, um, you know, um, I've been to Death Valley like so many times, and I've um, I've seen so many, or I've seen I've seen a lot of like fighter planes and like uh, other like, uh, like cargo planes from um, the, the Air Force. Um, you know, they would go down the valley or down the canyon, and they would uh, you know, I've seen them. I've been in Death Valley enough times where um, it's not uncommon to like see a fighter plane or see any other like military aircraft, uh, you know, going through their maneuvers in Death Valley. But what I just saw for the very first time is a fighter jet doing a maneuver right over the Eureka Dunes. And I've been there, so, you know, I've been there like, you know, a couple of times. It's the first time I've seen a fighter plane that up close and I obviously didn't have footage of it it was just too quick uh, to, to capture you know caught me off guard but I saw it coming and um, it was awesome it just went down it was so close and you know um, when I heard the uh, when I finally heard like the roar of a, of a jet engine it was incredible I mean all the other um, uh, campers here were like amazed too everyone was like really like excited to see it it was an awesome awesome sight to see One thing that I look forward to in trips like this is making a nice cup of coffee to start the day. It's a ritual of mine every morning that I can't be without even in the outdoors. On solo trips like this, I'll bring the Snow Peak collapsible coffee drip with me. I won't bring a gooseneck kettle since it takes up a lot of space, but, but I'll instead boil water using one of my camp pots and use a spoon for a camp pour over. This was day four of my solo trip to Death Valley and I had a great time being able to disconnect and be grateful for having the ability to go on trips like this. Being outdoors definitely is my happy place, but I was itching and ready to go home to my family, take a nice hot shower and sleep in a warm bed. But hopefully I'll be able to share outdoor adventures with my family another time. See you on the next one where I head out to Sedona and check out Snipley Hill and Broken Arrow.